these are places that normal people aren't going to see. I mean, realistically, what we do isn't terribly normal. And you're in a place that's serene and you're on your own and you can just create. It's like a painting waiting to be photographed. This was an unfortunate but still special place in the lives of many people, even if they did receive bad news here. Okay, so the plan today is to go to the Sanatorium de Besançon. It's about an hour's north of Paris. Before we head out in the morning, we usually do a last minute rundown of the logistics, the gear, the planning, what we know about the site. I think it started out as a chateau. It did. And then uh, at some point it was converted to a tuberculosis hospital, wasn't it? Yes, 1924, I believe and uh, was in use until, I believe, 1992. Wow, it's fairly recent. We go over everything. We look at maps, points of access for the place, security, all the hazards that we might encounter, and we just kind of plan everything out. As far as I know, there's no actual security on site, but it's in a small town. It's historically designated. It's important to the town. So we can expect that we'll be noticed if we show up and are not subtle about our entrance. There's a bit of concern about dislocation, just because you never know what's going to happen when we run into people that own somewhere that you're trying to get into. There is a bit of forest to cover. Here, I've got the satellite photo up here, so you can see we may have to find a way around the west side, hop a fence there and cut through the forest. There could be some challenges associated with that. We may have to move fast, but who knows? We'll see what it looks like when we get there. We find these abandoned buildings through a number of resources and people we know, mostly through the internet. There's a huge pool of people who do this sort of thing, not necessarily always for the photography aspect of it, but uh, explorers in general that document these buildings and, and where to go and, and, and what to see. So uh, we know some of these people and, and we reach out to them, see what we can find out and see how we can get into these places. That's part of the fun. One of the interesting features of this building is that it apparently has its own theater, but it's completely concrete walled with no windows. So it will be a great find if we can get into it. Hopefully we'll be able to see what secrets it has inside. I can't wait to get in there. I photograph these places because I have an interest in history and my curiosity draws me into uh, abandoned buildings, old factories, old hospitals, and uh, places that you wouldn't normally go. So, what do we got? So I think we're over here right about now. We seem to have come in along this road here, driven by the buildings. Mm -hmm. The main sanatorium appears to be here. We've got an aerial photo that's partially obscured by clouds. We don't actually know where we are. We only have a vague indication of where we're going, but we'll get there eventually. Um, we may want to double back and have a look around the other side. Part of the reason of doing this is the adventure and you know, a little challenge gets the blood going and gets you smiling. Et vous, vous avez rentré avant dans le sanitarium? Oui. So they, they've been in the sanitarium. C'est de... Comment vous avez rentré? Il y a plusieurs rentrées. Il y a plusieurs rentrées? Ici, ils devraient aller où avec leur voiture pour... Euh, là-bas. 
Hein? Là-bas. En avant du château? Ouais. ouais. Et euh, vous laissez vos autos là et après. Non, ouais. on, on les cache dans l'herbe. Ah, faut les cacher. Ouais. Oh, yeah, you have to hide your vehicles in, yeah. in the grassy areas. So then. Et, et c'est long marché? Euh, ce... Non. Non, so it's not a long walk or anything. En arrière? Il faut aller par la forêt ou. Ah non, mais là, c'est sur la route. C'est sur la route. Ok. So it's just really easy access, they're saying. Ok. Merci beaucoup. Ils vont nous actually guide us there. Ah! Magnifique! I can't wait to see it because it's so different from what we have here. When we go and shoot these things, we see the history in the buildings and you've just got to take note of it. So there's all these historical elements all around you. These are places that normal people aren't going to see. I mean, realistically, what we do isn't terribly normal. So to be able to show people what is contained within these buildings is, is not necessarily important, but it is interesting for a lot of people. Uh, on the flip side of that is documentation, because some of them get torn down. I mean, there's, there's any number of places that we've been, others have been, and all that's left now are the photos we've taken. They're gone, they're paved over, they're built over, they're in somebody's backyard, they're under their pool. Yeah. Yeah, that's your problem. 1972. No, he has tuberculosis. Huh. I'm no doctor, your, uh, but that can't be good. What's your prognosis, Now that we're here and seeing the place in person, um, it's sort of a mixed bag for me. The building itself, while interesting, is definitely made more interesting by the presence of all these patient records and the x-rays um, and that would that definitely elevates it to you know sort of a, a, another class seeing the records and the x-rays really gives that that personal touch and that uh, that sense of the use of the building and um, you know this was a an unfortunate but still special place to in the lives of many people uh, even if they did receive you know perhaps bad news here Or a local guides have told us this place is haunted, but you know, if I had a dollar for every time I heard a noise in an abandoned building. The Sanatorium de Besançon was built in 1884 by the Duc de Mesa. It was in use as a tuberculosis hospital from 1924 until 1984. The addition that we're in now was built as part of the hospital phase. It wasn't here as part of the chateau phase. that received quite a lot of use over the years simply by the abundance of x-rays and patient files that are still strewn about this entire facility.
This building is in pretty rough shape um, as a result of a number of factors, but uh, so far I'm pretty impressed with the shots I'm getting, mainly because this is something that people normally wouldn't see. I, I would, I'd be missing something significant if I didn't take shots to show people. A good shot it involves a, a well-composed scene that tells a story about the building's history, its purpose, and the people who were there. Now, of course, that's pretty ambitious. You can't always get that in one shot, but that's what I aim to do. This place is really wrecked, eh? It's in rough shape. Yeah. Have you been down in the basement yet? Not yet. Right, let's go. Sure. I take pictures of abandoned buildings because I, I love the challenge of working with natural light in a place where you just can't really set up a, a lighting system, nor would I want to. And you're in a place that's uh, you know serene and, and you're on your own and, and nobody's there to bother you. You can, you can just create. It's a, it's a great space for that. Let's hope we find something in here. There should be a morgue, something like that down here. Let's check out this room. Uh, you know, when, when things start to rot, people tend to walk away from them, and, and things that rot tend to be behind fences, so people don't see them. So people find curiosity and beauty in all of that. People ask me why I take pictures of decaying buildings, and it's because I find the history and the architecture in them to be quite astounding. And it also allows you an opportunity to access a building that you may never be able to see when it's active. Uh, in most hospitals and sanatoriums, the morgue would usually be located in the basement. Uh, so I'm expecting to run into it any time now. Once we hit the village, we came across these two kids on their bikes. And, uh, you know, it's a small village, big castle. What are kids going to do when they have nothing to do? Is that explore this place? So they became our guides to getting in here. And they were telling us about the alarm system and everything like that. That's the first one. That's the second. <laughs> My style is a combination of two things. One, I really like the contrast in light that's in Renaissance paintings. I mean, I started off as a painter. And I also like the styles of modernist painters like Agnes Martin. So it's very grid-like, very simplistic. And my style, I think, I hope, combines both of those. Looking at the kind of a color field uh, aspect of modernist painting as well as the, that Renaissance use of light. I see beauty in decay in so many places. I mean, you can see it in the richness of the texture, of the color, the depth there, uh, the light and its variations. It's all, it's all there, you know? It's like a, a painting waiting to be photographed. Steve. Looks like a, a medical report, obviously on lungs. Those, yeah, are likely lungs or... Um, they certainly do resemble lungs. Yeah. So of course our uh, local guides have told us this place is haunted, but you know, if I had a dollar for every time I, you know, I heard a, I heard a noise in an abandoned building, but uh, the wind does some crazy things in these places. Just depends on what you believe in, I guess.
My day job is a land use planner, and so I have a great love of cities and an appreciation of urban fabric. And through that, uh, I fell into exploring abandoned buildings. Uh, I mean, they're part of cities. They're interesting in their own right, and they're basically the change of industry. They're the change of cities. They uh, they represent much more than just the now of cities. They represent the past, uh, but they continue to evolve into the future. There's supposed to be a manhole somewhere around here which uh, provides access to the theater, but for the life of us, we can't find it, so. I think I found an entrance. It's, it's not an easy one. This is the actual sanatorium behind the chateau. Unfortunately, it's pretty trashed. Um, really cool though was finding all the x-rays. Uh, usually people leave things behind or whatnot, but very strange here that it seems the only thing that they've left behind is like thousands and thousands and thousands of x-rays. Uh, down in the basement, we found a storage room. Where, I mean, they're, they're three feet deep. I mean, that gives you a real idea of what went on here. Just files everywhere. Incredible. Mountains up there. It's hard to believe that every one of these files represents probably a case of tuberculosis, and this room is full of them. And what's more amazing is that you know this is this; these are all shower stalls, so uh, they probably had way more cases than they anticipated, and uh, needed to use their shower facilities just to house the files. They're everywhere. Nineteen sixty nine, Charles Pranier, poor guy. The abundance of X rays and uh, personal medical files, I mean they're just fascinating to go through. The hospital portion of the building, it's a little bit too decayed and too graffitied for what I typically like, but it's still good for a few shots and we'll see what else this location holds for us. It may still have some surprises left. Looks like there's a another staircase back here. Hmm. Let's go see. There seems solid. Yeah. Quality Parisian workmanship. Yeah. I think we found the Avita valley. Style? I don't think I have a style. Uh, I mean, there's no set methodology, I would say, behind my pictures. It's almost different every time. I mean, every time I go somewhere and every time I look at the images I brought back, it gives me new ideas and different way of looking at things and think, oh man, I wish I'd done this or uh, I shouldn't have done that, which then makes me sort of change what I'm doing. And so there is no real style. It does change and evolve. So I got a call from my friend Martin from Paris, and he was telling me about the theater here on site, the one that is completely sealed. Mm -hmm. Apparently there's a manhole that you can lift and get in through a tunnel underground. So we found another structure. Um, this could be the orangery that we've heard about. Uh, we're considering going in, however, it looks a little questionable. Some of the stones in the arches are being supported by nothing more than a wooden brace. So we'll take a look from outside and see if it's worth it. it seems to us like this is uh, some sort of a chapel or a church. Very strange <laughs> setup to say the least then. 
no entrance to, to anywhere else. Unfortunately, this is not going to get us into the theater. Well, so far we haven't found too much. This is the, uh, the hospital theater. Uh, we're searching for an easy way in. However, we're not finding one. Uh, we understand that if we go through a manhole and enter a few tunnels, we can access the theater, but we haven't found that manhole. Every entrance, every window, every door to this theater has been covered over with either metal sheeting or cinder blocks, making access quite difficult. <laughs> or impossible. Yeah. I could see through uh, the small windows at the end of this walkway. I had to look at my flashlight. It's pitch black inside. There's supposed to be a manhole somewhere around here which uh, provides access to the theater. So if there's an entrance, it's here somewhere, but we don't know where. All right, guys, I, uh, I think I found an entrance. It's, it's not an easy one, but uh, here, let me show you what I got. All right. All right, so here's the entrance I found. Um, as you'll see, it's uh, not an easy one. Have a look down there. Anyone got a ladder with them? Not today. Doesn't look worth it to me. I think this would be it, but I don't think we have the equipment to get in. Well, getting well, in isn't necessarily <laughs> the problem. It's getting out. That, uh, <laughs> Fair enough. I think being trapped in a uh, Renaissance-style theater in rural Paris. I mean, there's some places that are worth a lot of risk. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not sure this place would be... Well, I, just, I think it's going to be... It's not worth the risk. Yeah. I think we can, uh, yeah, maybe we'll seal this back up and uh, call it a day. Save mm -hmm. for another time. Yeah. Okay. Alright, let's close her back up. Merci beaucoup. Merci. Au revoir. Merci. Au revoir, mes amis. Au revoir. Thank you.